Shalom and welcome to another episode in our series called Journeys with Paul. Today we're actually on the western coastline of Turkey at the great site of Ephesus where we will follow Paul's footsteps and ministry here. The Apostle Paul was here at the end of his second missionary journey. It's listed in Acts 18. He actually leaves Aquila and Priscilla here as Paul just spent some time in Corinth and then sails to Ephesus en route back to Israel. But at the beginning of his third journey, Paul is also here for an extended time, and that means that he knew the city well. In fact, he knew the pathways well. This particular pathway that you see behind me, in fact, that we're going to walk down this pavement, uh, this does date to the time when Paul was here. Some of the ruins uh, of Ephesus are from a later time period but we can be certain that Paul walked on this pavement. There are certainly a lot of ruins here at Ephesus. Let's take a look at what we can see from this vantage point. We're looking actually downhill and this street also is one that leads to the famous library and eventually to the theater. Whereas the library that we'll see later on does date to a time period after Paul. Certainly the theater does date to the time of Paul. Except most likely the top layer of the theater. This is where we're heading through these pillars, these columns, these structures here at Ephesus. This was where Paul lived at the beginning of his third journey. We're making our way down to the area of the library, the Agora, the public bathrooms or latrines and of course the stadium. Paul would have been very familiar with this city. In fact, what he did as a result of his ministry was that he upset the economic cart, if you will, as he spoke against Artemis or Diana, the Roman name for this god, goddess of fertility and hunting. We're gonna be walking down this pavement and we'll see a few things along the way. But Paul was instrumental in bringing people to a saving knowledge of Christ here in this important port city on the western coastline of Turkey. There are a lot of impressive ruins here at Ephesus, although some of this does date to the time period after when Paul was here. However, this particular area where we're going to, I think a lot of people would have used it's the public latrine. Here it is. There was a channel underneath where you would sit. Of course, this has been restored, but 
keep in mind that there was a channel in front of you right there. And as you were, ed, would enter the, the tree and you would be handed a sponge. It was called Exlo Spongium. And that's how you would clean yourself. This is a classic public latrine, partially restored today. The Apostle Paul was certainly counter-cultural, if you will, not only here in Ephesus, but other Roman sites where he actually spoke against the Roman practices of honoring different gods and goddesses. To the Jewish community, of course, he tried to convince them that Jesus was the Messiah from the Hebrew Scriptures. Soon we'll go to the Agora and ultimately the theater here at Ephesus, but take a look at this structure. It's called the library, the Celsus Library. It was built in the early part of the second century AD, about 110 AD, and it's one of the landmarks here in Ephesus. Now the question is, where would Paul have discussed his faith with so many people? It would have been right here in the Agora or the marketplace. Every Roman city had a marketplace, like Corinth, like Philippi, but you can see that this is a very large structure where people would have done commerce. They would have discussed the affairs of the day. And as you can see behind me and all around, this is really the place where we find the Apostle Paul sharing about Jesus with the local people here at Ephesus. Acts 19 story tells us about what happened in this theater. This is an incredible theater, one of the best preserved here in Turkey. We'll read the story in just a moment from Acts 19. Look how large this theater is still today. Most likely the third section that we see high above us was built after the time of Paul. However, the rest of it was here. In Paul's day. As we have entered already this theater, we're now climbing the steps to the top of the second section of this well-preserved theater for the view. From here, and we can see how large this theater was. Remarkable in size. About 20,000 people rushed in on that day, mentioned in Acts 19. All except Paul, of course. Paul was not allowed to. His 
companions begged him not to go into this theater where for two hours the locals shouted great is Artemis or Diana of the Ephesians. We can see from this angle the pavement that would have connected the city with where the harbor once was. Let's read again the section of the passage in Acts 19 where we can find so many people gathered here in the theater. Verse 32 says, The assembly was in confusion. Some were shouting one thing, some another. Most of the people didn't even know why they were there. The Jews in the crowd pushed Alexander to the front and they shouted instructions to him. He motioned for silence in order to make a defense before the people. But when they realized he was a Jew, they all shouted in unison for about two hours, great is Artemis of the Ephesians. The city clerk quieted the crowd and said, Fellow Ephesians, doesn't all the world know that the city of Ephesus is the guardian of the temple of the great Artemis and of her image which fell from heaven? Therefore, since these facts are undeniable, you ought to calm down and not do anything rash. You have brought these men here and though they have neither robbed temples nor blasphemed the gods, if then Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have any grievance against anyone, the courts are, are, are open and there are pro councils and they can press charges. After he said this, he dismissed the assembly. All of this happened here in the theater of Ephesus. So as I make my way carefully down this theater, the steps are steep, uh, the steps are still slippery, but a great view of the pavement that would have went out to the harbor the water's edge is now miles away. But the Apostle Paul, here in Ephesus, spent two years and three months. And he made a difference. He made a redemptive difference in the lives of people. Certainly he ups upset the economic cart, if you will, in speaking against all the the silver makers, those who were profiting from making idols. And yet Paul again was steadfast in the message. All of this happened as recorded in Acts 19 at the beginning of his third missionary journey. Thanks be to Paul who was again steadfast and faithful in proclaiming the message of Jesus in such a place like this. Until next time, Shalom.